If you like our videos, consider checking out our Patreon. Hey everybody, got our bird here. It's Tuesday again, so that means... <laughs> Means we're spinning that fucking wheel again, and I'm hoping for something good. I need something good. Damn, me sounds easy. Because I got my ass kicked at work, and we need something good and happy. It's Good Friday in real life. Right. What's so good about it? Nothing. First year of marriage. Usually is awesome. What, the first year of ma marriage or yeah. Good Friday? Try the 10th and then you'll know what it's really like. <laughs> oh, I, think, I think we're, hey, I think we're at like 13 or 14, me and my wife, not me and you, because I know me and you have been married way longer than that. That's true. We're still going strong. <laughs> no yeah. prenup. It's the same, it's the same kind of deal, you know. I, I always see you twice a week. I always see my wife an hour a day because of like, you know. Yeah. Both of us working. So it works out. Yeah, because I don't see every, everybody every day. That's how you have a continuous friendship and said relationship. <laughs> yeah. You just don't see each other all the time. If you start seeing each other too much, then you start hating. But anyway, we'll be back after we watch the first year of somebody's marriage, I guess. Yeah, base it off your own, and then we're going to see what theirs is like. If it's shit, then you'd be like, well, well what was the point of this? And well, like show our, you like our whole first year, we were poor as fuck. Living in Scumville. Squalor. Yeah. Yes. You were like flea bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all that Sorry shit. Sorry about my flea bottle. Uh, all accent. that, yeah, you know, just eating bowls of brown. Bowls of brown. <laughs> you know, all that shit. And we bowls still made brown it through. And bread. There you go. But anyway, yeah, we'll be back after we watch that marriage thing. So we're back. We just finished watching the first year of Pete and what was Pete. her name? Oh shit! They said Pete a thousand times. Yeah, it was all from her point Pete of view. Said Pete a thousand times. It was all from her point of view and in her fucking voiceover. But they don't even know what we watched yet besides the title. Right. But anyway, yes, it's this '50s educational film for women for the first, what to expect in the first year of marriage? Yeah, but that's basically generalization, isn't it? You know, like, this is all gonna happen to you ladies, all across the board. You know what I mean? You're gonna have to move in with your in-laws. Well, it, that's not exactly hey, what happened, and, but there was, it was, yes, it was generalized, but it was still, it was like, pretty basic problem. It wasn't but that Pete me fucked you the both neighbor. Agree that these, these two, on both, on, on equal levels, we're whiny. You we'll, know? we'll get what that's the whole way to fucking end because it first starts off with fucking whatever her name is on the fucking Sorry, train. I did say it might have said one fucking time. It, it said, said Pete time. like I, eighty it times. Said Pete so a thousand times. But whatever. This chick's on the train giving voiceover talking about, you know, how she's been married for a year. Yeah. A lot has happened in the last year. Our first year of marriage. Gee, we got a good start. And then it gets flashbacks of them after they're married, moving into their first house, which is on the sec the first floor of a two floor place. Right. But Pete's mother lives on the first floor. And here. Pete's mother damn near flies out the window. Like, ah! <laughs> he tried to scare them or something. She was like, boogie, boogie, boogie. But yeah, they, you know? he, this. Pete's mother owned a two family house. She was a widow and lived upstairs. And we were going to live downstairs. Pete had a good job. Worked in the same plant as my dad. But dad didn't introduce us, though. We met at the church. <laughs> I still haven't forgiven daddy for not telling me about Pete. Okay, so then he carries her inside. Puts her down. And, and then he's like, ah, don't, he's, he's, he's standing at the door and he's like, hey, don't you go on cheating on me. I'll be right back with the luggage. <laughs> Came back in. And she's looking around like, you know, like, why does it smell like cats in here? But then it cuts to, you know, later that night, Pete builds a fire and then, you know, starts talking stupid oldie English. Duchess, madam, here is thy royal throne. Seat thyself in royal splendor while I shall get thee thy royal cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, well, he brings Pete's a coffee not in. Not late tonight, is he? But then they both start talking about coffee and whatnot in the oldie. Tis creamed and sugared exactly to my taste. 
Thou shalt be my royal brewmaster for evening coffee from this day forward. The old E? Yeah. But they had the percolator. Yeah, the old English, you know, old know like the 40, old E. Right. But like I'm saying, like they had like the old school coffee percolator. Well, you didn't see that yet because he comes in from the dark kitchen with coffee. Right. You see the percolator whenever they're later on when they're at the table. I still have one of them. But now they're talking about like their vows and stuff or whatever the fuck they're talking about in OD. From this day forward. To have and to hold. Oh, Pete. We're going to be so happy together. <laughs> <laughs> And then blah, blah, fucking blah. I'm just gonna call her Linda. I don't think that was her Linda, fucking name. Karen. But there's this really cool couple that, like, older couple that I know, their name are Pete and Linda, so I'm just gonna call, them, call her fucking Linda. I'm gonna call her Karen. You call, you call her whatever the fuck I'm you want. Okay, Linda. whatever. So Linda is sitting there talking about how she, had, she quit her job because of getting married and the problems with, like, you know, staying home and missing paychecks and whatever. We had decided I should quit my job when we married. Maybe I should say quit my paycheck. I still had a job. As the weeks went by, sometimes I regretted that decision to quit my job. For one thing, I missed those paychecks. And staying home was hard. It was an adjustment I had to work out. Yeah, and I was like, well, wait a minute. You So you just let Pete decide that you were just not going to work anymore. Again, that goes with, like, there's people back then have, like, this generalization of marriage and what it was. You know, like, I'm the man and I make decisions. She stay at home and, and poop out kids and, and wash dishes. It's like, that's that. What? You know? They never talked about kids at all in this once. And women are still trying to gain their independence. You know, it's been how many years? Still fucking, you know, fighting the man. Trying to get equal billing ain't never gonna happen. Nah, I'm not even. There's, not there's even rarities of guys like us where, you know, we believe that shit. Well, but dude, you, know? you just gotta walk a line when you're talking about that kind of stuff because people get all. Well, I mean, that's not. Like, I'm not saying it's every case. I know. No, but I'm just case. saying, like. It does it's, happen. Man. It's fucked because it was like, you know, I believe women should be able to do whatever the fuck they want, just like pe all people should be able to do whatever the fuck they want. Fucking dicks, vaginas, what fucking ever. A vagina turned into a dick, or a dick turned into a vagina. I believe yeah. all these people should be able to do what the fuck they want, but people get fucking weird, like, whenever they start talking about, like, women's rights and stuff. Even though we're totally fucking, you know, yeah. think that people should be able to do well, whatever the fuck they want. Pretty people still get... Pretty much for everybody's rights across yeah. the board. Human rights. Human rights. Fucking animal, animal rights. Animal fucking rights. Fucking yeah, what about Plant animals? rights. Yeah. All rights. Earth's rights. What about well, the planet's rights? If Earth's, if, if, yeah, if they did that, then it would just shake us off like fleas. We'd be like, oh. That's probably what should happen. <laughs> probably, but anyway, we're getting off the fucking point. Because now they talk about, you know, since Pete's bringing in the money and whatnot. Oh, because they... Bring in the money. But whatever, they talk about how they make decisions on how to spend Pete's fucking salary together. Conflicts over money can be a real problem in marriage. But we decided together how Pete's salary would be spent. Maybe we didn't always agree, but we decided together. So our joint decisions on this and other problems of home management helped in my adjustments from a working girl to a non-employed wife. He's like, so I get enough money for half a case of non-alcoholic duels and you get the rest for creamers and fucking shoes and powders and whatever. Jamie's nuts, dude. She has like a billion pounds of creamers and half of them half full, you know, and I'm like, what the fuck do you need all that shit for? Yeah, you should cough or take a drink or something. You got a little <coughs> bit of a thing going on with your fucking voice. Now you're making me feel like, <clears throat> like I got something going on there. But okay, so anyway... Blah, blah, fucking blah. Now she's talking. Linda is talking about fucking in-laws. What did you think your pants if her name really was Linda? Yeah. It's Linda, not. Linda, it's not. It. <laughs> but on another potential source of trouble, in-laws, when we first planned to move into that two-family house, I thought of all those mother-in-law jokes. 
Still, they couldn't apply to nice people like us. Stop being a bitch, Karen. <laughs> okay, so Karen slash Linda is throwing a bridge party with her friends. I was planning my first bridge luncheon. Honey, Jane can't come on Thursday. I wonder who I should get for fourth. Right. But somebody like, fucking she, drops she, out. She tells her husband, she's like, hey, one of my friends can't show up. And she and he goes, well, you know, my mother likes to play, play bridge. And, and you know, she's a widow and alone and right. just right upstairs. Right. And, and not doing a damn thing. And she's like, well, I don't know. You know, she well, like to no, hang she, out with young yeah. chicks. Yeah, oh yeah, she does say that. Hmm. Mother plays a good game of bridge. Yeah, but... Maybe she wouldn't enjoy playing with a bunch of giddy girls. Oh, honey, she love it. She likes young people. So, yeah, anyway, so, you know, she comes down with a fancy cake. She insisted on bringing a fancy cake. And fucking right. Linda's like... <laughs> it was delicious. Everyone said, helped make a good party. But it wasn't my party. <laughs> uh, right off the bat, Linda's... I know. It's like the fucking nice old lady came and brought you and your friends fucking a fancy cake. Like she's like, ah, oh, she's trying to show me. Yes, it, it doesn't something. feel like it's my party, man. Well, like, oh, shut the fuck up. Just appreciate the gift, you. I know, and it's not even because Linda, because like we were talking about earlier, later on, Pete's a fucking whiny fucking bitch too. Yeah. So whatever. Moving on whatever. from that, we cut to fucking Linda talking about Pete's mom again. Right. And about how, well, we did have good times, like shopping and blah, blah, I fucking blah. Like, Wait, if you had good times, shut the fuck up. But yeah, anyway, blah, blah, fucking blah. Well, it wasn't all bad. Pete's mother and I had good times together. Shopping, for instance. I could learn a lot from her. Her experience in getting bargains. Her little tips on Pete's special likes and dislikes. Okay, so yeah, dude, I mean, for real. She's like, well, I do like when she shows me how to get a good deal and tells me Pete's favorite things. Yeah, I know. But, like, but then you gotta nitpick and find shit that the woman does to irritate you. Yeah. Like, why can't you just accept the good and shut the fuck up? Like, everybody irritates somebody once in a while. So, yeah, now Linda's getting even more upset because Pete's mom, which lives right upstairs from them, you know, asks Pete to, like, come over, like, a couple nights a week to, like, you know, help her do some stuff or get some packages or something? Well, one afternoon, Pete stopped in upstairs to deliver a package his mother had asked him to pick up. And it turned into a habit to drop into his mother's on his way from work two or three times a week. I didn't mind so much supper being late. I kept telling myself. But somehow... It seemed on those nights, we always got into an argument, sooner or later. And fucking Linda, once again, I can hear him upstairs. I'm like, it's not like he went, like he has to go down like 20 blocks away yeah, or dude. whatever. He's like, he's right upstairs. But you're going to get all huffy. How about huffy. this? When you're home doing nothing while Pete's at fucking work, right. why don't you go help mom with some shit? That might, like, you know... Yeah. Like, how many you, dishes you might get? You, you might get a good a relationship it's going. It's like you have a kid. You know? How many dishes and sweeping do you need to do? I shit. know. Pete looks like he only wears the same fucking outfit, so you don't have to worry about... Yeah, but I guarantee he has a lot of fucking pomade dripping down his fucking collar. That's and shit. true. She so I guarantee it, it takes her all fucking, like, three days to walk. One of his fucking shirts, yeah. <laughs> With the old school fucking scrubbers, you know. Uh, you know, you know what? What's the call? Yeah, yeah, the washboards. Yeah, yeah, the washboards, yeah, board. yeah, Ross boards, right. I don't know. So, Linda tries to tell Pete how she feels, <coughs> and Pete gets sore. I tried to tell Pete how I felt, but it was no use. He'd just get sore and make some crack about my family. I thought my family was pretty wonderful. Well, she was like, you know, your mother and blah, 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 and, you know, and of course Pete gets defensive, you know. Just, but do we even hear it? Cause that's all, really, like, it's all, like, she, she does voiceover and just explains. Yeah. But then she explains how she went over to her parents just to bitch about Pete and Pete's mom. We talked things over about Pete's mother, I mean. Dad could understand. So could Mom. We had some good chats together on Saturday afternoons when Pete would play golf. Dad said her like, I, I told you she was a bitch. 
<laughs> but like you know, but like you know, you think the parents would be like, ah, oh, Jesus, it's only been like a year. No. Shut up! You were so whiny. I mean, just because, you know, our, if his mother comes down and wants to help you with some shit, why don't you just appreciate the help? You know, and she's a lonely old woman. You know, why don't you stop being an asshole? Yeah. So anyway, still at her parents, Linda envies their love and their marriage. It was a joy to see the way Mom and Dad understood each other, anticipated each other's needs, sometimes without a word being spoken. They had really grown together in their marriage. Why couldn't we? My dad disciplines my mother every night. <laughs> and then blah blah fucking blah. They, Linda talks about some things like, you know, little things and big things that she had to like, you know, change or whatever. But whatever, she says she had to force herself to, self to like liver because Pete likes it. Meanwhile, we were still working out other adjustments together. Little things. My serving liver and learning to enjoy it because Pete liked it so much. Okay, I'm aware this is the 50s or whatnot. Right. But my wife likes liver. I can't stand the fucking smell of it. I can't. It's just fucking. It's foul. It is foul. I ain't fucking being like, it's good. Like, listen to that. Like, key. You know, like, fuck <laughs> that. You know, yeah. like, that shit's nasty. I just won't fucking eat it. I'll be like, if you want it, I'll fucking cook it. I ain't fucking hey, eating hey, it. Any proper marriage, you know, I don't know. But like, yeah, but if you're, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're like, I like the leper, and your woman's like, I don't. You're not gonna be like, eat that fucking butt. I mean, maybe in the fifties, maybe. Yeah, but. probably, then, but not now. You yeah. like, that's okay. I, I eat a leper. I mean, dude, even if there was something that I extremely liked and my wife did not, I would not expect her to be like, no. okay. Yeah. I mean, you sound like you just shot yourself. I didn't fart or nothing. It was just like, ah, ah, no. ah, and she's fucking eating it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah that, it, that's yeah. attractive and yeah. that's loving. Oh, yeah, I'm going to eat this liver. Oh, ah. Like, back then, if she had done that, that was like an insult to you and your entire family tree or something. So you had the right to beat the liver with a belt or a pan, whatever you chose. Talking about back in the day. What are you talking about? What are you backing away for? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, blah, blah, fucking blah. It's spring house cleaning time. And Linda, once again, is up. Oh, not once again. Once again. That shit happens now. You know guys come over like, potato salad. Oh, you know, yeah, dude. A right fucking abuse right. happens all the fucking time. Yeah. You say that you had the right, not you. They had the right to. I know. It's a I little. Said back then, they felt like they had the, the right. Okay, yeah, that's better. But anyway, what I was saying before my brain short circuited <laughs> was that Linda is out there spring cleaning, like, you know, washing her windows and yeah. stuff. Mom comes down, doesn't seem like, you know, <laughs> mom's not saying nothing. Not being bitchy, mom's just smiling, washing some fucking windows and shit, and Linda's all... <sighs> She's like, it's like she has to one-up me. Or and it's like, then she does do it, it. She does it. Yeah, but she does it a different way. Oh, oh dear God, no. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, she was raised a different way. She does, does, uh, does things. I bet she is whining all the time about help. Whatever I did, she did too, but in a different way. And it seemed to me she always thought her way was better. There were so many little situations that probably wouldn't have mattered if we hadn't lived in the same house. But I felt so awkward and inferior and mad. <laughs> were you just sitting over there going, oh, yeah, I was there waiting for you to finish <laughs> so I can fucking point it to the fucking video. <laughs> so moving on to later that night. Pete and Linda have a discussion about moving and Pete getting a new job. Daddy, I, uh, I got a surprise in uh, today's mail. An offer of another job. Wonderful job. But uh, way over in Central City. Let's talk it over. It's time we get away. Do something really decisive about the influence of your parents on our marriage. My parents? And why is Pete getting a new job if he had such a decent job working at the same factory as Pete? 
Linda's mother, father, whatever. Oh, this is why, because fucking pizza whiny fucking bitch. Yeah. You don't know what it's like working in the, the same plant as your, your wife's father. Dad likes you, Pete. He's done so much for you. Oh, sure he has, dear. I know your dad's been swell. Try to understand me. It means so much to have you understand. Golly, if you feel that way, Pete, well, you just do. There must be reasons. Well, they, they may not seem very important to you. Tell me, Pete. Things like, well, when I got that promotion in December, you said how grand it was of your dad to help. I mean, praising me to the boss and all. Oh, I felt as though I, I earned that raise myself. And stories of influence like that didn't help me with the other fellas. And then you appreciated your dad's efforts. I wanted... I wanted you to appreciate mine. Well, I got that promotion, but your dad was talking me up to the bosses. So I didn't feel like I just I got it because I deserve yeah, it. I didn't feel like I earned it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, dude, you stupid dick. Like, you could have had a golden opportunity with some golden ass money. You could have moved out. You could have bought your own house, and you didn't have to be. And, and, and grandma or mommy wouldn't have to be upstairs. You know what I mean? You'd have your own place. So both of these motherfuckers. Have some serious self-esteem issues Thank or you. some serious fucking personality disorders here. Mm -hmm. But anyway, right? So now she's like, "Oh, this is the perfect time. He was bad mouthing my dad. I'm gonna tell her how much, tell him how much I hate his mother." Right. It was hard telling Pete about his mother, so he wouldn't think of it as a counterattack. He tried to understand, and I tried to be fair about it. I could see that I'd been on the defensive. I hadn't understood that a widow might sort of need a man around the house. And Pete said that he needed, that both of us needed to grow up more. So she was like, she's big. <coughs> and all she does is try to help me. You know, and I don't like it. I'm like, ugh, oh, stop being a bitch, Carrie. Yeah, so blah, blah, fucking blah. We're moving on to Linda on the fucking train. And you're like, oh, she must have left Pete because, you know, he hasn't been there the whole time. Right. But then Pete comes up and says this corny shit. Hey, Duchess, what am I doing on this seat? <laughs> and then, you know, she does a little voiceover wrap-up. Pete and I will both miss our folks. All of them. The grandmothers would have made good babysitters. But wherever Pete's job takes us, even back to our hometown, I know we'll work things out together as partners. And then it fucking ends. Yeah, well, then he, he came out and he was just said something like, somebody else sitting here? Yeah, or, or yeah, like, what, well, something Duchess, or why am I sitting in this seat? And he gets all fucking up next to her, and I yeah. vomit in my mouth some. So I'm just picturing the fucking Dapper Dan fucking dripping down his fucking <laughs> face. The Paula man so, just yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, they, because those guys look like they put that shit on with, like, they just put it in, lacquered it in. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know? Fuck. Yeah. yeah. I don't have anything else to say about the first year of these motherfuckers' marriage, besides they both Not fucking really. kind of suck as it's, people. Well, I'm going to go with a prediction that it's probably going to end in a few months. Well, she mostly murders <laughs> Pete in his sleep. Right, and puts him in that big-ass fireplace. <laughs> well, they don't live in that house anymore. Oh, that's right. Because, you know, they're going to go get... Go move, and then Pete's gonna get this new job, and it's gonna suck because he has nobody, like, you know, talking him up or going to bat for him, so he's gonna, like, you know, be the low man on the totem pole. He might lose his job, might get laid off, you know, they'll be poor for a while, then they'll fucking lose their apartment, and then they'll be living on the fucking streets, well, and then Pete will be out there fucking sucking dick for fucking, damn. like, you know, food money for them, and then she'll finally, she'll finally get fucking sick of them, <laughs> and then she'll fucking leave, you know, for some other homeless guy, and they'll be living in a box, like, right across the alley from them, and, you know, Pete has to lay there in the fucking, his box in the middle of the night, listen to wow. that fucking angry fucking hobo fucking, you know, that's, 
when I picture their that fucking was a lot how their wedding or their process. marriage is going to end. Sorry, my Pete's lost. And then Pete fucking hangs himself with like you know a fucking used fucking belt from a robe, like a terry cloth robe he finds in a dumpster. Wow. So he, he he crafts a fucking makeshift noose out of it and fucking hangs himself. You know, not David Carradine's it. No, he doesn't pull out his dick and fucking do that. Well, maybe he, he just hangs maybe himself. Maybe his and, dick accidentally eh. flops out. Well, I mean, he does have, like, you know, he does wear hobo pants, so, like, I mean, there might be a whole... Shit, so, yeah, like that. his dick might just flop yeah, out. Yeah, maybe. So people might assume that he did a carotene. Yeah, but that was pre carotene That was pre carotene People would just so be like, what is then before what, what was he doing with yeah. his dick out hanging himself? Do you think people did that back then? Like, you know, people were like, oh, he carotene himself. Or like, oh, he caused beat her. I mean... You know, do you well, think, like, back then... They they had, like, like, like he fatty arbuckled her? <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if people did it, but I, I want to know if they did or not. Yeah. But anyway, on that note. Yeah. We'll see. For Gutter. For, for, for yeah, Gutter. I, I, us. We'll see you later. Yeah. Hopefully your marriage goes better yeah, than Pete's. Hopefully Pete your and first Linda's. year of marriage is a lot better than Pete's. Because I'm telling you, man, in like six months, they're going to. That, sit, that, that situation is going to end up arising. It is good. <laughs> yeah. She's going to arise like babe. It when she hops on up. that new fucking hobo's dick. Oh. Well, yeah. He, yeah. 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 Okay. I'm good with that. She hops on that new hobo's dick. I feel so comfortable with you. I feel like... I feel like I can take my shoes off. From the beginning, we were learning to live together. And to love together. Learning to adjust different sexual responses. But time doesn't stand still, and marriage is far more than loving together and enjoying companionship. That first Monday morning, I was so proud of my man going out to earn a living for us. And Pete was so proud of me cooking our first married meal. Then, suddenly, it was time for Pete to go to work. He said he didn't want to go, but he was a responsible married man now. I had a lot to learn about cooking and keeping house. And sometimes those things can seem unimportant and dull. Believe me, a wife does appreciate her husband's appreciation. And, of course, that works both ways. I tried to learn about Pete's job. Sometimes I shared his enthusiasms. And there were times when I had to help absorb his frustrations. It was all part of the partnership.